So what we have here is a Hangona Fire Lance Hocken Boost. There's multiple names for it. This one's based off of one that was found in a castle in Tannenberg in the late 1340s. So historically, these were used by what would become a lot of Hungary, Czechoslovakia in the Bohemian Wars, particularly John Ziska, J-A-N-Z-I-Z-K-A, I think. There's some little funny Slav symbols on the top. Um, so with his normal army, he would have wagons, and they were supplemented with these. Women, children, people who wouldn't be able to normally fight would have a tube on a stick and a match, pretty much. And they would be fired from, they'd encircle the wagons, and basically through that, they were able to defeat superior forces with this technology supplementing their normal army. And we're going to be just firing some rounds through this, comparing the fire rate, the accuracy, and sort of the power between that and an English longbow. This is like a, what, 70 pounder? 70, 75 pound. Yeah, a war bow is at 80 pounds. Most war bows were historically like 110 were... plus. Yeah, way over 100 pounds. So this isn't full power, but like n none of us here can draw a full on war bow. And it will take you years to be able to. So we're just going to do some shooting with them and compare them and whatnot. So we have two sets of targets at about 70 yards. We'll be shooting them with the Hangona and also with the bow. We have sort of just a small group of people, but we'll just see where the arrows or the shots pass through. Even if it misses the actual silhouettes, there would still be people behind it. So this is just going to judge the effectiveness and the accuracy. Okay, so we have our Hangona. This is our very hefty war wagon from the Bohemian Wars. We'll be shooting it as a two-man team. I'll be bracing and then loading, and he'll be keeping the wick going, ready to light. So loading procedure. It's in my pouch. I have pre-measured charges. Normally this would be carried in a wooden sort of powder horn, but for safety reasons I'm going to have it pre-measured charges. Then I grab a paper patch, or this is actually a cloth patch that's slightly oiled. Then in here I have my 75 caliber balls. So I'm going to get it started. And I have a ramrod here. Ram your balls. So it loads just like any muzzle loader. I'm using my thumb to cover the flash hole. If not, the pressure will push some of the powder out. Once that's done, I'll brace it. And then I'll take a little bit of from another charge and prime the pan. At that point, we'll aim and fire. All right, five rounds in the war wagon. Here we go. Ready. Woo, that one hurt. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. That one didn't want to light. All right, we'll see how many hits that is. Fuck. All right, here we go. Second salvo of five. Ready. Ow, that was a stout one. Send it. That one didn't want to go. That was hot. That was a good one. Woo! That was a lot better. Our second attempt here was a little bit better. I was the cameraman this whole time, but you can see they've got two hits right here, and God wait, wait, knows where the other three went. Whoa! No, that was whoa, for whoa. me. No, oh, that, that was, was your sword. That was you. Okay. okay. You, you poked it with your sword. Okay, okay. so we got two. Ignore hits. that one. Yeah. We put that there. The <laughs> cheat. Yeah. So two hits right there. I was primarily aiming for the middle guy, but like, I'm really just looking down a stick to aim. Keep in mind you'd be shooting these into formations of troops typically, so you're not looking for single man accuracy. Yeah, this is this is a smooth bore, probably like eight inches of barrel travel on the round. So I don't know if they're, I didn't see any hit the dirt, so I don't think they're going low. They could be going off left or right. But uh, of, of this group of three, where we were aiming, we had two, two hits on it. I feel uh, like second iteration on the line, like actually during the firing, the most noticeable, there was powder fouling, which that was kind of an issue. Yeah, um, if, you, if you saw me struggling with the ramrod, was, it's You could tell up. he was struggling to let her be like. Um, 
the tighter you wrap the wick, the hotter the core would stay. Um, so that made a big difference because it was tighter wrapped on that round. You yeah. can tell a difference in his ignition between him going like this and him like doing that too. Yeah, like you, he was you, definitely you quicker when in he him. got into it so he could see what he was yeah. trying to do. Um, mm -hmm. And the powder, uh, the last vial of powder we had probably might have had some moisture in it. Um, this one was... Yeah, we switched to a new vial of, of powder. Is this powder wet? Reprime, reprime. I gotta relight too. Gotta That's dangerous, light. don't do that. <laughs> uh, this is all old Einsford 3F black powder. I don't think this will work with black powder substitutes. No. It's just too hard to ignite those. Even, even this was hard to ignite. Uh, and probably back in the time they're using a much coarser grain. So what you really need is a fire or an oil lantern or some sort of chemically treated wick, which I'll probably mess around with to get good ignition. Our second round though was still pretty, that was pretty decent. It was better than I would have expected after the first round. It was actually probably 50% better. From the fire's the perspective, speed. it's fast as hell. From your perspective, probably very slow. Yeah, I'm just sitting there like, you guys, you guys gonna fire it? <laughs> that so, felt quick compared to the first time. Now that we've seen that, we'll see just how much better, I'm already gonna call it, how much better the bow is yeah. in this time period. We're talking about like the 1400s here. So we'll see how that ends up. Here we go. That one flew like shit. First iteration with the helmet he's used to, we have one of them hit the fence post, so we're going to count that. One hit right there on the left, and then one actually went right through this lattice. You can't see it, but it, it is back there. So we, we did get better hits. I'm going to count this. That'll count because it would have hit the legs. So we're going to do the second iteration now. one went right over his head. technically have one hit down there, but one went right here, just barely over it, and two went through the bottom of the lattice. So that would have been the thighs and legs. Right there's one, and the other one's right there. So I'm gonna count that as like three and a half. Um, I mean, for both of these weapons, in a large formation, you would have hits. But if we're talking about measured hits on paper, we're about at the same hit ratio. But the problem is with the arrows, you can see them when it goes over or short. With the hand cannon, if it misses, you don't you don't see the round exactly where it went. But I'd say accuracy is about the same, actually, probably. If we're talking about hitting three people like this. If we're talking about in a volley, probably still the same. And we're not trained archers. It's pretty obvious the bow is just better, the fire rate and everything like that. The big difference is a, we didn't have enough paper really to simulate a full-on, you know, group you'd be firing into. This is just a small sort of sample size for targets. And the other thing is, it takes no training to use this pretty much. It takes decades to be able to use that properly to its fullest effect. This is not a full power war bow. This is definitely not an English archer. Um, so for, for the time period it was used in, this made sense for its application, and that made sense for its application. Oh, yeah. I'd say the big thing to consider is, is 
they're, if you're in a formation and you're getting ready to charge another formation, they have these hand cannons, they're probably going to get one shot off before you can close that distance, whereas the archers are probably going to get off three or four. And the archers are able-bodied men, whereas the people using these are probably going to be children and cripples. So I'm a lot more afraid of an able-bodied man who has a poleaxe or st st laying on the ground next to him than I am going to be of children and old people with these hand cannons. Because their rate of fire is so slow that they're realistically only going to get one volley before you close the gap unless they have a screen. But, you got to keep in mind, these are those old women and children and men, whatever, that are using these, are they're shows. added on top of your existing army. This is true. And that's, that's historically what what occurred with these, what with saying? John Ziska, or however you pronounce that. I'm not, I'm not Czechoslovakian. So I don't Why know would you shit. want to be? Exactly. I'm trying to masturbate here! Oh, what the fuck? <laughs>